Back when I was still in university, I didn't have the money to live in downtown Toronto and close to the campus, so the only choice I had was to commute two hours from home to attend school. So almost every day for four years, my commute consisted of walking to the bus stop from my house, which took about 10 to 15 minutes, riding the bus to Square One Mall, where I had to transfer to another bus that took me to the train station, riding the train to Union Station in downtown Toronto, and then from there I could either spend $3 to take the subway that stops pretty much at my campus, or walk the rest which took about 25 minutes. But for a broke university student, you know you gon' walk. Dang, Dom. You must have been so bored during the ride. Actually, I tried my best to be unconscious for most of the commute, because being an architecture student who has to spend four hours of their day traveling, you know I'm gonna be using that time to catch up on sleep. Which wasn't always the best thing to do since I ended up missing my stop a few times and then having to walk back, making me even more tired, and then by the time I get home, I'd have no energy to finish my homework, so then I pass out and wake up with the sun shining rays of disappointment at my face. There was one time when I had to take the GO train in the morning to catch an 8 a.m. class. <sighs> I slept at like 3 a.m. the night or morning of because of a project, so I was pretty dead and wanted to savor all the sleep I could get on the 30 minute ride. Now, Union Station is the supposed last stop on the route, okay? So, one of three things happen upon arriving. One, I wake up by the time or before we arrive. Cool. Two, the strangers around me are willing to wake me up knowing I probably don't want to stay in the train and probably have somewhere to be. Cool. And then what happened that day? Number three, no one wakes me up. I remain unconscious. Uncool. Obviously not their fault, you know, that's, that's, that's just me failing at life. I don't know how long I was out. Uh, out? Out? No, no, we don't say oot. It, out. I'm saying it right. Out. Yeah, out. But by the time I woke up, the train was moving again. Not back in the direction where I live, but past Union Station towards who knows where. So I panicked. I didn't know what to do. There was no one around me. I wasn't in immediate danger, but I needed to get the hell out of there. So I hit the emergency button. Train stops, doors open, and a worker <laughs> runs to my cart. Whoa, what, 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 what happened? Uh... I, uh, I fell asleep. Get out of here! Okay, sorry. Commuting via public transit can be inconvenient enough as it is, but it doesn't help when bus drivers can be so savage and just not give a f if you don't make it on time. Like, okay, I get it. They, they gotta stick to a schedule. They, they have guidelines to follow, yeah. But if the schedule says that the bus is arriving at 1.40 p.m., I'd say it's safe to assume a five-minute window before and after for the bus to arrive, given good weather and accounting for some traffic. But if I'm walking towards my bus stop, okay, like I, I see it in the distance and I see that a bus is already there at 1.30 p.m., I shouldn't be going, is, is that my bus? Please let that not be my bus. That's gotta be like the 120 bus running late, right? Oh god, that that's probably my bus. Is it worth sprinting for? Mm, Alright, we running boys, and there it goes. Motherfucker! And then I'm forced to wait for the next one, which is sometimes only another 10 to 15 minutes, and sometimes another 10 to 15 centuries. I mentioned good weather as a contributing factor earlier. I live in the Toronto area where our winters can really be problematic for the roads. One time I had to wait for the GO bus at the station because trains only run during rush hours and that particular day was like a day or two after a blizzard. So roads were pretty bad but I, I still had to get to school because you can't be a little bitch and skip class when each semester costs like 8 grand. So I'm at my stop, waiting in the shed, negative 15 degrees celsius outside. Bus is supposed to come at 11.05 a.m. It was 11.10. Alright, yeah, it's cool. R roads are pretty bad. I, I get it. 11.25. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, there was, there was probably some sort of accident on the road, Yeah, but the bus should still be on its way. 11.40. Can't feel my toes. Maybe I should have worn thicker socks. 11.55. I regret my life choices, I, I probably should have stayed home today. 12.10 
bus still hasn't arrived. By that time, enough people have gathered and were probably worth maybe like four or five cycles worth of people. I overheard others discussing what was wrong. Some called the helpline and reported that there were some major issues with buses breaking down and whatnot, and that they will be sending other buses ASAP but could take another 20 to 30 minutes. All right, time to weed out the weak from the rest of the herd. Let's wait it out. At this point, I was way past late for my class anyway, but I had too much pride to give up, so I sucked it up. We're already committed. Let's go. I lost a sense of feel in most of my body anyway. What's 30 more minutes? 12.25. The bus turns into the station. There's maybe 200 of us waiting. The bus is pulling up, and it stops at the back of the line. Why would you do that? There was a moment of hesitation when we, the people at the front of the line, were like, No way that this bus driver is that dumb. Right? And then he opened the doors. I pretty much got trampled because everyone rushed to the back to get on the bus. I was honestly too tired to even fight for it. I mean, after the cluster of people managed to fit in the bus, the driver told the rest of us that more are coming in like 5 minutes. So, okay, yeah, I guess it wasn't too bad. Except the next bus did the same damn thing. Oh baby, what have we got here? Hey, that looks like a loot crate box. That's exactly what it is. But what is it? What, what, what do you mean? You, you just called it a loot... You knew what it was... What? Alright, you obviously don't know how to do this, so let me just take over, okay? Alright? Alright. Loot Crate is a monthly subscription box service that contains a bunch of exciting geek, gamer, and pop culture items. Tell them how much it is. Yo, chill. Uh, I'll get to that. Less than $20! <sighs> yeah, what, what do you said? Meaning each month you get 6 to 8 items ranging from licensed gear, apparel, to other collectible items that are worth over $50 in retail value. When's the cutoff? You have until the 19th of any month at 9pm PST to subscribe and receive that month's crate. And then it'll be automatic after that. But what if I wait until after 9pm? Then you lost your chance on that crate forever. But you can always look forward to the next month. There's always at least one thing that'll interest you. So sign up at lootcrate.com slash domix and enter the code domix to save 10% on any new subscription. How do they know what they're gonna get though? Well, you see, each month has its own theme. This month, being Dystopia, contains items such as the Aerodyne Police Car and Police Badge from Blade Runner, a Fallout 4 headset, and a Mirror's Edge wristwatch. Wow! Someone give that one bus driver one of these, cause he sure as hell didn't come to my stop on time. But hey, if you miss out on this box, you can look forward to the next box, of which the theme is futuristic. You can expect things from Star Trek, Futurama, Mega Man, and Rick and Morty. Seriously, I, I need Season 3 of Rick and Morty soon. <laughs> Please. And if none of these interest you, Loot Crate also offers other genres such as gaming, pets, and anime. Once again, that's LootCrate.com slash Domix with the code DOMIX to save 10% on new subscriptions. Enjoy!